Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Yes, it's the Abbott and Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood for your listening and laughing pleasure, with chuckles with a carload and music by Matty Malnick. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Hey, Abbott! Hey, Abbott! All right, all right, all right, cut out that yelling. What's all the excitement? Well, I went to a party last night, Abbott. There were 30 girls there. Not one of them would dance with me or even talk to me. You didn't have any fun then? No, I was as lonesome as Fed Allen on Sunday night. <laughs> I thought you were such a big shot with the girls. I don't uh, believe you ever had a girl. Oh, yes, I did, Abbott. I had a very beautiful little blonde once, and everything was swell until one day she ran off to Florida. She married a guy, and now she has five children. After that, we just sort of drifted apart. She had... <laughs> Why don't you speak to my wife, Lou? She knows oh, lots of nice girls. No, no, your wife don't like me, Abbott. Well, no. if you hang around with her more, you'll find me. You'll eventually uh, get into her skin. Well, I guess one more lump won't hurt her. I... <laughs> How can you talk that way about my wife? Remember the first night you met her? Yes. The minute she walked in the room, I said, there's either an ugly woman or a good-looking man. I... <laughs> Castell, do you know you're getting more stupid every day? Gee, thanks, Abbott. I'm glad to know I'm not stagnating. Oh, get him. Before the boys get any further involved in nonsense, here's a thought that makes good sense. that thing you've got under your arm? That's my new Harry Truman rifle. The Harry Truman rifle? Yes. A 48 repeater. Uh... <laughs> what happened to you last night? I called your house and you weren't home. Well, I went to the movies, Abbott. I saw one of those old-time pictures. It was all about the Romans. They had a chariot race in it, and it was won by a guy named Ben Hem. Yeah. You dummy, you mean Ben Har, not him, Har. They were all dressed up in them bed sheets. You couldn't tell the hymns from the herd. <laughs> well, if you'd gone to school, Lou, you'd, you'd known the story of Ben Hur. Did you go to school, Abbott? Oh, certainly. I started in nursery school, then I went to kindergarten. So what? I started in nursery school. I went to kindergarten. And I went from kindergarten to grammar school. So what? I went to kindergarten to grammar school. I went from grammar school to high school. You think they'll be as short as a meatballs this summer? <laughs> now, Sally, you've got the brain of a monkey. I'll bet you I have not. Yeah? What do you want to bet? Fifteen bananas. <laughs> Trying to insinuate that I'm ignorant? Abbott, you're nothing but a Hollywood character. Oh, what's a Hollywood character? A jerk with a personality. <laughs> I'll ignore that remark because of your ignorance. Who's, who, who, who's ignorant? Uh, when I went to school, I specialized in history. I can name off all the most important dates in history. All right, go ahead. Name some important dates. Oh, well, I will. There's uh, 1492, 1776, 1812, 1917, Rita Hayworth. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Rita Hayworth is not an important date. 
Ali Khan seems to think so. <laughs> Costello, why don't you listen to me? Take my advice once in a while. I'm your friend. I realize you're not a... Yeah, that you're an idiot, and I want to assist you, Lou. What good can you do me? You're just an assistant to an idiot. <laughs> well, just look at you. You're, you're dumpy, you're Now, just hold it, Abbott. What do you now, mean? Hold it, hold it. What do you I'll mean? I'll go for so much, and that's all. Now, it's not my fault that I didn't grow tall like the other boys. When I was a little boy over in Scotland, I used to play the bagpipes, but it gave me pneumonia. Uh, wait a minute. Now, look. Wait a minute. How could playing the bagpipes give you pneumonia? There was a leak in the bag, and the air kept blowing up my kilts. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of wearing a whisk broom in front of my kilts like the rest of the Scotsmen, I had to wear a hot water bottle. Ah, <laughs> uh, you must have had a very poor childhood, Costello. I did have it. We were very poor. My mother had to work, and she had to take in washing. She had to scrub office floors. She worked like a she worked as a blacksmith. She drove an oil truck. And one time for three years, she worked in the daytime as, as a waitress and worked at night in a coal mine. Well, what, what did your father do? He kept the books. He kept... <laughs> well, I guess you had a pretty tough time when you were a kid. Yes, I'll never forget the day my mother made my first pair of long pants. It had 12 buttons down the back and four pockets in the front. Well, what did she make them out of? My father's old vest. I was the only kid. I was the only kid in school that had a watch bob hanging from a knee. <laughs> Were you very popular with the other kids in school, Lou? Oh, I was a pitcher on a baseball team. What a pitcher I was. I had a drop ball, a slow ball, a curve ball. Did, uh, did you have a screw ball? That was before I met you, Abbott. I... <laughs> you dummy, you ought to be back in school right now. For your information, Abbott, I'm keeping steady company with a red-headed school teacher. What does she teach? She has a high school class of men all over 40 years old. 40-year-old men? Why don't they go to college? When she gets through teaching them, there's nothing else to learn. <laughs> Running around with a school teacher. Why don't you find a nice girl and get married? I'm going to have it as soon as I get some money. Money, 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 money. Costello, don't worry about money. Do you realize what money is? Money is the root of all evil. Money is an invention of the devil. Money is filthy lucre. Money causes misery. Money. <clears throat> That's what I think of money. May the Bank of America have mercy on your soul. <laughs> Costello, you don't need money. What you need is the love of a good woman. Find another girl like my wife, Betty. You mean there's another girl like your wife, Betty? <laughs> Costello, I love my wife. My Betty's a real cookie. Your wife is a cookie? That's right. Abbott, you just said baking back 20 years. <laughs> You'd be lucky to get a girl like my wife. My Betty is always straight from the shoulder. Who wants a girl that's straight from the shoulder? I like the girl that curves. <laughs> oh, Uncle Bud, Uncle Bud, something terrible just happened to me. And this is really his Uncle Bud, and this is the nephew. <laughs> we don't kid about it. He's got to work. <laughs> Abbott's nephew. <laughs> Pay attention to what he says, folks. This may be his last performance. <laughs> what is it, uh, Norman? Nephew Norman... Why are you so excited? Well, Uncle Bud, when I was coming through the pass in the mountains, a mountain lion jumped right in the car beside me. Yes, then what happened? The lion killed me! <laughs> uh, wait a minute, Norman. You're not dead. Stop crying. You're working on the Abbott and Costello show. You're still living. You call this living? <laughs> really, though, Cecilia, there goes a brilliant boy. His brain is on a slow boat to the Mayo Brothers. Now, you lay off, Norman. He's a very intelligent boy. He's always studying and reading. It wouldn't hurt you to do a little reading once in a while. Oh, Abbott, I do plenty of reading. When I was seven years old, I started my first book, Little Red Riding Hood. I rented it from the library. It's the oh. last time I'll ever rent a book from the library. Well, didn't you uh, like Little Red Riding Hood? Abbott, up to now, I owe that library $2,800. And Little Red Riding Hood has yet to meet the wolf. <laughs> Little Red Riding Hood. Why don't you read some of the newer books? I just bought Gypsy Rose Lee's new book. It's a story of her life. Well, what does uh, Gypsy Rose uh, Lee call her new book? The Leg and I. <laughs> Why don't you read something educational, Lou? I am, Adam. I just bought a book on inventions. It tells all about new gadgets. 
I bought one yesterday for my Aunt May. What kind of a gadget did you buy for your Aunt May? It's a new girl that's made from surplus paratroopers' harness. And it's a handy little thing. At night, she doesn't have to undress. She doesn't? No, she just jumps off the top of the dresser and pulls the ripcord. <laughs> that's ridiculous. But, hey, I understand you're working on some kind of a silly invention yourself. And my invention is all finished, too, Abbott. It's a new kind of perfume. And all the girls in Hollywood are going to go crazy about it. All the girls in Hollywood are going crazy about your perfume? Why? It smells like money. <laughs> I gave a bottle of it to my Aunt May. Boy, did it make her popular. <laughs> your Aunt May was never popular. Is that so? Back in Patterson, New Jersey, she was so popular, every guy in town used to drink champagne out of her slipper. And what did it get her? She's got the only big toe in the world that belongs to Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> Mister, what's going on here? Uh, that's this darn kid of mine. He won't eat a spinach. Junior, you've got to eat your spinach. I ain't going to do it. I don't like spinach. <laughs> <laughs> well, you reach your spinach on Saturday, I'll make you go to see Abbott and Costello's picture, Mexican Hayride. No, no, you can't do that to me. I'll eat my spinach. <laughs> you're my father. But I'd like to take that kid over to Santa Anita Saturday. What for? I want to drop him in a claiming race. <laughs> oh, hello, boy. Hey, look, Costello, it's Viola. Ah, uh, Viola, you look very lovely tonight. Uh, Viola, I understand that you and Costello had a date last night. Where'd you go? Well, Costello had a terrible time making up his mind where to take me. Well, you see, I was trying to make up my mind between Ciro's and the Macambo. But we finally went. Uh, where? To a hamburger stand between Ciro's and the Mocambo. Well, don't you worry, Viola. After we're married, things will be different. We'll have lots of little ones, and they'll all look like me. Oh, gee, I'd always planned on having children. <laughs> I'd plan on having a few laughs here. Are you sure you're reading the same script? <laughs> Lou, you shouldn't be jealous of me. I, I don't want to be a comedian. I don't want to make people laugh. Okay, then you read my lines. <laughs> Costello, you can't be funny without me. You need me. Why, where would Ed Edgar Bergen be without Charlie McCoffey? Where would Amos be without Andy? That's true. Certainly. One thing goes with the other. Like Dorothy L'Amour. Where would she be with her, without her sarong? I don't know, but I sure would like to be there. I... <laughs> uh, Costello, I, I think you're girl crazy. I'm not the girl for you. But Viola, you can't leave me. What would I do without you? Oh, uh -huh, don't worry about that. I'll fix you up with a girlfriend of mine. Oh, you'll be just crazy about this girl. When she meets you, she'll rush over and she'll throw her arms around you like this. Yes. A and she'll squeeze you like this. Yes. And, and she'll, she'll kiss you like this. And this. And this. And this. <laughs> there. Now, what do you think of that? When am I going to meet this girl? Why don't you take pity on Costello and marry him? <laughs> then you'll be known as Mrs. Louis G. Costello. G? Oh, what does the G stand for, Costello? <laughs> don't you tell her, Rabbit. Ah, oh, come on now. What does it stand for? George? No, I don't want to tell you. Oh, come on, Costello. What does the G stand for? Oh, do I have to tell you? Yes. It stands for Gloria. <laughs> Yes, my mother always wanted a girl, and my father didn't have the heart to tell her. Viola, <laughs> why don't you forget Costello and come to the movies tonight and see our latest picture, Mexican Hayride? Oh, thanks, Bud, but I, I saw the picture already. Oh, you did? Tell me. How did you like my acting? Well, it was... Hmm? Uh, I I'd say... Uh, mm hmm well, well, let me put it this way. Sure. You know how Van Johnson has that dramatic touch? Oh, yes. A and how Clark Gable has that forceful personality? Yes. And how Gregory Peck gives that little artistic extra something? Yeah, 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 yeah. But, 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 what about me? Costello, can you drive a taxi cab? <laughs> oh, now get this girl out of here, will you? Come on. That's only half the fun, folks. Just as many laughs yet to come. But first, listen to this.
now the spotlight turns to Hal Winters, our singing star. Here he is with Matty Malnick and his orchestra. <laughs> I caught you, sir, having a look at her as she went strolling by. Now, didn't your heart beat boom, 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 and didn't you sigh, a sigh? I warn you, sir, don't start to dream of her, just bid such thoughts be gone. Or it'll be boom, 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 from then on. For once in love with Amy, always in love with Amy, ever and ever fascinated by her. Sets your heart afire to stay. Once you're kissed by Amy, tear up your list, it's Amy. Fly her with bonbons, poetry, and flowers, moon a million hours away. You might be quite the fickle hearted rover, so carefree. And bold, who loves a girl and later thinks it over and just quits cold. But once in love with Amy, always in love with Amy, ever and ever sweetly you romance her. Trouble is, the answer will be. That Amy'd rather stay in love with me. Hey, Costello, come here. How did you get your clothes so dirty? Just just look at your coat. It's torn and your shirt is ripped and... Uh... That ain't my fault, Abbott. Right. I was out on one of my Sam Shovel detective cases last night. I invested a case of a robbery at the fraternity house in UCLA. But I miscalculated. Got into one of the girls' dormitories. How did you manage to do that? By careful miscalculation. <laughs> Costello, instead of running around nights on those silly Sam Shovel cases, you should stay home. Oh, I do stay home a lot, Abbott. Every night last week I stayed home. I cleaned the house. I got a terrible servant problem. I find it very difficult to hold a maid. Now, what makes it so difficult for you to hold a maid? My mother keeps walking in the room. <laughs> Never mind that. I understand. I understand you took your brother Pat to the movies last night. Oh, yes. But I ain't taking Pat to the movies no more. He acts very strange. The minute we got into the movie, Pat put his hat under the seat. Well, what's strange about that? What's the men put their, uh, their hat under the seat? While well, their head is still in it. <laughs> All talk sense. Hey, wait a minute. Come here. What is that big manuscript you're carrying under your arm? Well, I didn't want to tell you, but it's a book that I wrote. A book you wrote? It's the first chapter. The hero is threatened by a mad doctor who tries to remove his head. In the second chapter, he meets a demented butcher who tries to put him in a meat grinder. Then it ends where three maniacs tie him to a tree and a squad of wild woodpeckers peck holes in him. But nobody wants to publish it. Why not? I guess people are sick of them mushy love stories. <laughs> What is your Sam Shovel uh, detective story about tonight? Well, tonight I do one of my most famous cases. I call it the case of the photographer who was stuck up in a dark room, or he was caught with his prints down. <laughs> well, that sounds terrible, but let's do it. And now, the makers of Bebop Bubble Bath present the adventures of Sam Shovel, private detective. But first... A word about our product, Bebop Bubble Bath. Friends, would you like bubbles in your bathtub? Hmm? You would? Well, why not call up Bubbles and see if she needs a bath? <laughs> Ladies, try Bebop Bubble Bath. We don't ask you to buy the large size, mind you. Just try a trial size package. It contains a seven-year supply. <laughs> You'll find that if you use Bebop Bubble Bath every day for seven years... You'll have skin just like a baby. <laughs> a baby alligator. 
<laughs> Listen to what people all over the country are saying about Bebop Bubble Bath in Kansas. Give me Bebop Bubble Bath. In New Jersey. Give me Bebop Bubble Bath. In Oregon. Give me Bebop Bubble Bath. In Virginia. Give me liberty or give me death. <laughs> That Patrick Henry never gives up. And now the makers of Bebop Bubble Bath bring you your favorite thriller mystery. Here he is, Sam Shovel, Private Detective. Yes, I'm Sam Shovel. Sam Shovel, Private Detective. The detective business has been mighty slow lately. Last night, having nothing to do, I went to a big public library and buried my nose in a book. This morning, I had a heck of a job finding it. I forgot what book I buried it in. Here comes my secretary now. Did you call me, Mr. Shovel? Don't be silly. Why should I call you Mr. Shovel? <laughs> my name is Mr. Shovel. By the way, Miss Jones, did you find a file on a crook, Joe Kirk? What's his name? Who? Joe Kirk. Never heard of him. <laughs> Miss Jones, you and I have got to work late in the office tonight. Are you prepared? Oh, yes. I brought my brass knuckles, my fencing mask, and a baseball bat. Clever girl. She's so stylish. She was voted one of the ten, ten best-dressed women in Azusa. That's not so remarkable when you consider there's only nine other women in Azusa. <laughs> Suddenly, the inter-office communication system buzzes. It's my secretary. She speaks. Mr. Shovel, there are two men here to see you about a case. Mr. Cohen and Chief Lightfoot Running Deer. I'll see the Indian first. You can go in now, Mr. Cohen. The cops have certainly got their hands full these days. Full of fives, tens, twenties. I think of my pal, Lieutenant Abbott of the Homicide Squad. Abbott has been on the police force for 20 years. He knows which side his bread is buttered on. He can take any piece of bread and say, this side is buttered. <laughs> Sam, I'm on the trail of Zeke, the hillbilly moonshiner, burglar. Lieutenant Abbott, I'll be glad to help you. What do you want? Well, you've seen Zeke. Give me a thumbnail description of him. Well, he uses liquid polish, and his cuticle is pushed way back... <laughs> Sam, I want you to go with me to the Ozarks. I've got to capture Zeke. It'll be a dangerous trip. Those hillbillies are strange people. They're always arguing, shooting and farming. Yep, shooting, fighting, and fertilizing. <laughs> Come on, Sam, we're heading for the hill. <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott and I arrived in the hillbilly country. Sam, these hillbillies are strange people. But you'll have to admit they're solid citizens. They've got both feet on the ground. They've got to have both feet on the ground. They don't wear shoes. <laughs> I read in the papers where a 75-year-old hillbilly wanted to marry a girl nine years old. Did he marry her? Nope, his parents objected. <laughs> they didn't want him marrying a girl who'd been divorced three times. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Sam. Here comes a bunch of hillbillies. Let's, let's ask... Let's ask them if they know where Zeke is. Uh, howdy, strangers. I'm Jim Hartfield. These here are my sons. I'm Sam Shovel, the detective, and this is Lieutenant Abbott. Boys, say hello to the strangers. Lem? Do. <laughs> uh, Clem? Do. Uh, Bert? Do, sir? Uh, Bert went to military school. <laughs> I don't like the looks of these guys, Abbott. The skinny one has got an ear of corn and two pumpkins. So what? They're farmers, and farmers have corn and pumpkins. Grown out of their heads. <laughs> well, gotta go now. We're working on a farm. Uh, two weeks ago, we dug a hole. Last week, we dropped a seed in it. And today, we're gonna cover it up. <laughs> Do you always work that hard? Yeah. Except when the weather gets bad, then it slows us up a little. So long. Boy, is that guy lazy. If he was a chicken, eggs and television sets would be the same price. <laughs> Never mind him, Sam. We've got to find Zeke, the moonshiner. Hey, look over there behind those bushes. There's Zeke's. There's Zeke, the moonshiner still. Come on. Hey, 
Hey, look. Look. There's Zeke. He's making corn liquor. He's jumping up and down on the corn, crushing it. Hold on there, Zeke. We've got you covered. You're under arrest. Stop mashing that corn with your feet. What are you doing? I'm making some 90-proof corn liquor. And tomorrow I'm going to make some that's 100-proof. How do you do that? With that, I take off my shoes. <laughs> Zeke, how do you make that corn liquor? Well, first I mash up the corn. Then I dump in a gallon of turpentine. Then a gallon of Clorox. And two quarts of juniper juice. Don't you put no alcohol in it? Why? Ruin the taste? <laughs> Zeke, we're taking you to jail. Sam, grab some of that moonshine for evidence. And you better taste it to make sure we got the right stuff. Lieutenant Abbott, you know I never touch the stuff? So you're a brave detective, eh? Sam Chevrolet, guard, you coward, taste it. That stuff will grow hair on your chest. He's only kidding, Sam. Go ahead and taste it. Okay. <laughs> Sam! 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 Speak to me, Sam! Don't stand there, Lieutenant. Call a barber! This hair is so thick I can't see where I'm going. Get me out of here! Now, before Abbott and Costello have their final fling, we bring you one more thought on this subject. Costello, why don't you tell the folks about uh, your next week's Sam Shovel story? Folks, my next Sam Shovel story takes place in a chewing gum factory. I call it the case of the beautiful blonde who fell into a vat of soft gum, or there's good chews tonight. <laughs> yes, and our writers are working on the case right now. Our writing staff is headed by Eddie Foreman with Paul Connell, Pat Costello, Martin Raggedway, and Len Stern. And our producer is Charles Vander. Be sure to be with us next Thursday night. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody Good night. in Patterson. Good night. Come on. And me, Uncle Mike, Uncle Tom, and Eva. Listen each Thursday night at this time for another great Abbott and Costello show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood. Be sure to stay tuned for the outstanding entertainment which follows throughout the evening on this ABC station.